Welcome to United States Paranormal Podcast. Sit down and buckle up for an enlightening ride through everything cryptid, creepy, and paranormal. Hello, friends. It is I, Golden J, and welcome to the United States of Paranormal Podcast. With me, as always, it's Alicia. Hello. And I say always, this is our first episode uh, doing the Paranormal Podcast, yeah. so she's always with me. <laughs> well, you are our editor and producer for Murder Nerds. So it's true. And if we you, are always together. If you can't find me on Murder Nerds, you can also find me on Golden Image Podcast, because what the hell? I'm a whore. <laughs> Got your toes and all the pies. I want it all. I want the world and I want it now. (laughs) We're here to bring out episode number two of the United States of Paranormal. And it is my turn to finally do research and present a case. And I'm not going to lie, peeps. I'm nervous as hell. So just bear (laughs) with me. You're going to do great. (laughs) Today's episode, I'm going to be talking about the Galvez Hotel down in Galveston, Texas. It is the most haunted hotel in the state of Texas. Really? Yes. And I am excited to tell you about it. I'm ready to learn. All right. Well, let me start off by saying that my sources for all this are Mm -hmm. galveston.com, ghostcitytours.com, Wikipedia. Obviously. Can yeah. I use Wikipedia? Is that okay to use yeah. Wikipedia? Okay. We use I it use all the time. I use Wikipedia. I also use Chips Paranormal on YouTube and Strange Town on YouTube. Both of them have done investigations in the hotel. So awesome. let me tell you about the let me tell you about Galveston, Texas in general. It was named for Bernardo de Galvez. Okay. He was a American Revolutionary War hero and they named the island after him, Galveston. Galveston's an island. Well, I, I guess I shouldn't really call it an island because it does attach on the one side, so it's more like, like a, peninsula. a peninsula. I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't yeah. even. I feel yeah. so dumb. I had no idea. <laughs> one quick <laughs> note about getting to Galveston from the, the Louisiana side is you go down the Gulf Coast on. Um, I probably really should have checked that out. It's either ten or twelve state, one of the big roads that go down there. And you're driving along, and boop, you've come to the you've come to the Gulf, and you sit there and wait, and the ferry comes over, <gasps> and you drive up on the on the ferry, no and way. it takes you to Galveston. Oh my God! How and now needs? so, I thought this was a really cool thing because when when we went, that's how we went, and I was looking into it and. Because we didn't pay a toll. Usually when you get on a ferry, you know, you have some sort of toll. Yeah. But it's part of the road. No way. Yeah. That's, they consider that part of the highway to go through there. Since there's no bridge and you're running this, they just, you get on there for How free. How wild. It, it is, it is amazing. So you're riding along, you're out in the, out in the golf area, I think. I think it's part of the, I don't know whether it has a specific name coming in, but you're out there, and the dolphins are <gasps> jumping uh, right next to the ferry. How oh. long is the ride? It's about half an hour or so. No shit. Yeah, that's yeah. You a- can get out of your car, you walk around, you go up, and uh, that's worth it just to do that. Oh, it's, it's amazing. I I really enjoyed all of my time that we we spent down there and doing all these things. But so Galveston was named for this American war hero. In the nineteen in nineteen hundred, okay, okay, they had one of the worst hurricanes to ever hit the state of Texas. Oh, it no. hit directly into Galveston, and it killed. I know it was we were not on murder nerds, but <laughs> it killed any. What was it? Uh, Six thousand to eight thousand people. Oh my god! This hurricane just Decimated. devastated the island. Yeah, yeah. completely destroyed uh. it. And we're gonna we're gonna come back to that hurricane here a little bit later in in this story because I just want to tell you a little bit more about the Galvez itself. So in 1900, this hurricane hit, and just before they were planning on building the Galvez the Galvez Hotel, mm-hmm. the Beach Hotel 
had burnt to the ground. So they wanted to resurrect a new hotel in this in this space. Mm -hmm. So they were, you know, in the plans before this hurricane hit. So it was like prime real estate. Eighteen ninety eight when the when the plans started to come together to to build the Galvez, and then of course then the hurricane hit and just devastated everything. But they kept they kept going forward because they wanted to build this as a monument to the mainstay of, of Galveston itself and how they can come back from all these. Now, anybody who knows anything about Galveston, they are like a hurricane magnet. I think Katrina was one of those ones that hit right in that area between them and New Orleans and, and mm-hmm. pretty much devastated it. And they've had several other ones, too, over the years that have just just riddled this little... little yeah, being a peninsula, yeah. they're sticking their thumb right out it's, in the... And, you know, it's it's not very... I mean, it's, it's at sea level, so oh. they actually... As they were getting ready to build a hotel, they built the giant seawall to help keep some of this stuff out. So in 1911, the hotel was built. Now, check this out. I thought this was extremely interesting, and I I didn't do the math. But in 1911, they raised a million dollars to build this hotel. What? Now, can you imagine what that is today? Like a bajillion. Like Oh my goodness! Can you imagine raising a million dollars in 1911? I mean, that's a lot now. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. It's like, yeah. Holy shit! Yeah, but as as the years have gone on, the Galvez has taken on many names. You know, it's swapped out. It's been some sort of Marriott Galvez, and and so on and so forth. Now it's just called the Grand Galvez uh, Resort and Spa. And I showed you a picture of it a little bit ago. Beautiful. It is a beautiful place. Absolutely beautiful. The, the grounds are beautiful. Over the years, it's had it's all kinds of exciting things have happened there. At one point, it became a temporary White House, you know. What? And, yeah, for like a couple of weeks in, in one of the wars, it became like part of a White It was considered the White House at that point. And over, uh, it's been just a host of to tons of celebrities. Including, you know, presidents like Franklin Lee Roosevelt and Eisenhower and Lyndon B. Johnson. They all, all wow. have been there. And let's not even forget about the celebrities. Just a couple of like Jimmy Stewart, Frank oh, Sinatra, nice. and Howard Hughes. Those are just a few of the the big celebrities that go there and stay there. So it really truly is a, an amazing landmark in, in the south part of Texas. There. Yeah. And, of course, like I said, it's beautiful. So... So they basically considered it like the Vegas of the South. You know, all these people would come down there and gamble and drink and just have a have a good old time. And um, I guess the the deal with uh, the temporary White House was back in World War II when they the Coast Guard was was coming in and out of there because they have a huge port on the back side of there where all the ships and stuff come in, all the big cargo ships and Mm -hmm. stuff like that so it's pretty much in and out and we'll talk more about the port here in just a little bit when we start talking about some of the some of the good stuff that we're we're here to talk about terrifying things the terrifying terrifying it sounds too good to be true like it's beautiful and then it's got all these like fun little quirky things about it so it's obviously gonna uh, you're gonna make me not want to go there (laughs) <laughs> when well, I go there. <laughs> that, that's the thing is, is that once you hear about it, it may even actually make you want to go there more because we talk about paranormal mm-hmm. and we talk about a lot of things that go bad with paranormal, you know, people yeah. getting grabbed or scratched or pushed or stuff like that. Not really at the Galvez. Really? Yeah. Are they going to do my laundry for me? They might. I know they'll get you your ice and I'll talk about that in a bit. <laughs> So let's double back a little bit and let's go back to this hurricane of the uh, 1900. Mm-hmm. The hurricane, like I told you, demolished the island. But one of the big things that it uh, one of the big things that it destroyed was an orphanage there on the, oh, on the island. Oh, Jeremy. I know it's terrible. So the sisters of St. Mary's Orphanage were trying to protect the the orphans of, of the orphanage. So what did they do was is they took ropes during this hurricane while they were trying to get to where they were going to go and they tied ropes to the, the their waists and then tied to the kids, the orphans, 
to try to keep them all together while they made their way to oh. a to higher ground, basically. Yeah, they didn't really work out too oh, well. They no. they say that it became more of a hindrance than it did them good. All right, so you ready? No, this I'm is not. gonna hurt a little bit. In their attempts to get to higher ground, ninety children <gasps> and ten sisters perished in that hurricane. Oh my god! A lot of them they found on the beach in front of what is to become. The hotel got us. No. Oh my god. So in all this devastation I just got chills. Over I'm sorry. The whole body. <laughs> I'm sorry. In all of this devastation, they just buried them where they found them. Stop. Yes. They did not. They did. Oh, that's just asking for <laughs> that's asking for a ghost right there <laughs> you want a ghost this is the way to do it. <laughs> it, it's it's i mean that's a lot of children and yeah and it you know i was i was reading it i was like oh that's that's horrible did you know about this before you went no oh my god I'll t- i'm gonna tell you about this after i tell you all of the all of the uh stories that i that i uncovered i'm gonna tell you about my experience oh of my going god. to the galvez I can't wait. <laughs> well, you, you, I hope you're not too disappointed in it because, well, anyway. So we we built a hotel, and it's a it's a lavish hotel, and all the celebrities are coming, and all this stuff's going on. And there is a young couple that stay at the hotel. He is what they call a mariner, so he's going in and out of the ports, okay, all the time. And he leaves, and she stays at the hotel, and she waits for him to come back. Now, they're getting ready to get married. I'm going to go with this, because there's a couple different stories that say they were already married. They called called her his wife or whatever. But And what I found was is they were, when he got back, they were getting married. Okay. So she stays, she goes up into room 501. 501 has a great view out. Because the Galvez sits right on the golf. You can look out the front of it and you're looking out at the golf. So she had a great view. She would go and stare out her window and wait for her, wait for her soon to be husband. Or she would go up into the one turret up in the top where mm-hmm. she would set up there with even better view and just wait for him to come come home. You're gonna break my heart again. You know I'm you? gonna break your heart. <laughs> so another big storm rose through. And a couple days after that, she gets word that his boat had capsized and that everybody on the boat had passed away, had perished. And she's devastated because she's waiting for him to come back. Yeah. So she is in the mindset that he is coming back. So she waits and she waits two, three, four days, nothing. So in her complete depression and the loss of her, the love of her life, she goes back up into the turret where she always is watched for him and she hung herself. Oh my God. But the story doesn't end there. No, don't tell me. I think you're going to tell me something You're going to like, you look like you're about ready to just tear up. (laughs) Three days later, he came home. Oh, my God. Looking for his soon-to-be wife. Oh, my God. This this is the worst story ever. <laughs> it's terrible. I know. Oh. And how do you, I, I mean, how do you put that in there? You you know, she waited and waited and waited, but she, she was just totally distraught and just, she couldn't live without him. Yeah. Love makes you do weird things, I She guess. is known. Are you ready? As the lovelorn lady Aww. of Galveston, of the Hotel Galvez. I'd probably haunt something, too. And <laughs> that, 501, is her room. And she is still there to this day. There has been... I don't know that I've actually heard of an apparition sighting, but a lot of investigators go and investigate room 501. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of flickering lights, a lot of TVs that are not plugged in that are still on, you know, 
uh, lots of orbs and a lot of people say that at night you can hear her wandering the hallways oh, looking for looking her hubby mm-hmm, waiting for her man to return Ugh. that's horrifying that's so it's, scary or like s- sad that room you have to book I don't even know exactly, but I'm going to say years in advance. Oh, surely. Because you cannot get into that room. Because that's where everybody wants to stay. Yeah. Everybody's looking to experience a little, yes. a little ghostly. They want a little bit of the ghosty ghost. <laughs> and I will talk about that again in just a little bit. Man, you Room just... 501. <clears throat> We're bouncing around a little bit. Doing because, this. You're making me wait well, well, more info. The, the really cool thing is is that I was watching I was watching Chips Paranormal. Mm-hmm. And they want they it was really cool because they got there and they had a they had a room, but it was not on the fifth floor. And that's where everybody wants to be was on the fifth floor, because that's where she's at. Yeah. When they found out that these guys were investigators, they couldn't give them five oh one. But they did give them a room close to up hey. there on the fifth floor. So they upgraded them when they found out that they were investigators. So it was really cool watching them because they immediately set up their cameras and stuff in their room. Mm-hmm. And have you seen the the thing that they have where it shows like the little skeleton figures? Yes. It's like the dots. Yes. Where it's so the person. So they got the camera set up and they within five minutes of being there and turning on they've got a little kid sitting on the corner of the bed oh my god and a lot of this investigation revolved around they think that that was one of the orphans that's so sad it just roman but it was really uh. cool because they actually got the kid coming off of the bed the, the skeleton figure that comes is on it, there where is this on youtube yes oh my god I'm gonna yes that is chips it. paranormal oh my gosh so they they went around they they wandered room with um, the fifth floor with their uh, EVP machine and their and their stuff like that and they got tons of voices now in the video it actually states where with headphones now I did not have my headphones available when I was listening mm-hmm. so I didn't really catch them but they had stuff like. Um, they had one that said, we died here. Oh. It's so cold. They ask about names. They said one was Leroy. So they had tons of stuff like that. But the ice machine, remember I made the comment yeah, about the ice yeah. machine? They rounded the corner because they had EVPs on. Mm-hmm. The, uh, um, not the EVPs, but they're, um, not the EVPs, but the electromagnet things that they run yes. around that shows when they have the energy come out. That was going off, so they round the corner. Well, the ice machine kicked open. And started pouring out, pouring out ice. Oh my god! And they went back and looked at it, and they said, "You really, literally, have to push on this to get the ice to dispense." That's wild. So it was, it was pretty cool. But they did. They wandered around. They ended up with their with their talk box, and they had a full on conversation. With what they think was a three year old boy named Andy. Oh. But yeah, he was talking to him through the through the talk box, which was pretty cool. But one of the one of the neat things was is is that there's rumor that there is a black man dressed all in black that people have seen in the hotel, mm-hmm. and the one guy was like, "Did you see that? I just saw a black man dressed in all black. It was right there, and now he's gone." <laughs> Of course, you know, in a lot of the ghost hunter paranormal stuff, they didn't quite catch it on camera. Yeah, he goes, of but he said. I didn't take a picture of him because I thought he was real. Yeah. That he looked so real. And yeah, I was like, well, that's a little kooky. Yeah. When they see full bodies there, I mean, are you going to just be randomly taking pictures of yeah. people? Well, and that's what see? he said is like, you really just can't, you know, you just snap pictures of people as you're walking around. Well, and from what like I've heard from watching other paranormal stuff is, um, Using having a full body apparition takes a lot of energy mm-hmm. for spirits, so it doesn't last very long because they only have so much energy right. to exhibit. And you also notice that that's why you're only getting like partials, or yes. like a half body, or or you know you don't get the full body and full dress. However, 
there are people that that are walking around the outside of the hotel and they look into the music hall through the window mm-hmm. and they see like three women all dressed in Victorian dresses sitting there just waiting. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine you're just walking around, you look in the window and you see these three women just sitting there? Uh... I would just shit my pants. <laughs> probably. <laughs> this whole conversation is giving me chills all over my arm. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. What else happened down at that Galvez? We got the, uh, of course, we talked about the orphans. Uh, sister Kath, uh, Catherine is is supposedly still in the hotel. Really? Yes. Remember, I told you they buried them where they right, found them. Where, yeah. Yeah, most of them were right there where they built the, the Galvez. So they just built the hotel right on top of these bodies. Oh my so god! Move them. <laughs> they say that the that the hotel is built on mass graves. Oh my God. So that leads you into all of these children that are still running around the hotel. And one of the big ones is they they say there's a little girl who plays with a ball. And oh. she is all over the lobby in the gift shop and all that stuff. But they just a, leave a ball? For- no, she's got it like, she's just carrying a ball with her and she's playing with her own. It's her own, I guess. Like a real ball? No, it's a. It's not a oh, real. Okay. It's hers. She has a ball that she's playing with. Okay. It's hers. Now I've I don't seen... know that she was one of the orphans. I would, you know, maybe yeah. it was. But I've seen where the like paranormal investigators will take a ball with them and say roll it back. Yeah, and I've seen some of that. I've seen some of that happen where the ball comes rolling back at them. Uh, it's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't know that I could do it. I. Uh... I just don't know. I say I want to, but then I get there, and Skylar and I have been on some some paranormal trips together, like out to Little Egypt and stuff, and I'm yeah. like, let's not do this. I'm scared. <laughs> Just kidding. It, was, it so- was fun while we were talking about it, while we were drinking, but this is yeah. not that much fun. Exactly. I did see it. There is a picture out there. I didn't save it. I think it was in one of the videos that, that, that I saw that's an actual picture of a woman setting in the front lobby just just sitting there they actually have it it's i mean it's a, it's a side shot and it's like her shoulders up like she, a picture of a apparition yes <gasps> it was in one of the videos i can't remember exactly which one. Oh my gosh yeah isn't that crazy that's wild so now i'm like looking around here like <laughs> i don't i'm pretty sure that my studio is not haunted but <laughs> never I say never so. never say never <laughs> In one of the offshoot videos that I watched, they actually, you they introduced you to some of the hotel uh, employees. Mm-hmm. And I want to hit on the first one. Oh, Bobby Lee Hinton. And he is an 82-year-old historian of the Hotel Gavez because he's worked there for almost 50 years. Oh, my gosh. That was the second time. He worked there when he was younger Really? When, yeah, yeah. It was like nineteen or whatever. But then he went off and did some other things, and then actually came back and Couldn't started stay working. Away. There. No, he can't stay away. But if you ever, if you're ever there, you got to look this guy up. Now, I wish I'd have looked him up when I was there. I wish I'd have known about him because he just looks like he's he looks amazing. But he has got all those great stories. He talked to you about the painting that was on the on the wall of Bernardo. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a big painting down in the lobby, and he says that one of the cleaning staff was down there and she looked up at the painting while she was cleaning and his face turned to a skull. That's, uh, and she stared at it for the longest time and it just was just, a, you know, like the flesh had been ripped off the, the, the painting and it was just his skull. And somebody, I think it was, I think it was Bobby come up and said, you all right? And she turned around and, she goes, I can't believe what I'm seeing. And she turned around and it was back to the normal painting. You would feel like a crazy person. Every bit of it. Like, am I schizophrenic? Did I, did but, I just see but, something? But I'm saying that with Bobby, though, you know that he's a, he knows what he knows, goes on. Yeah. There. yeah. He knows all the yeah, little. All the crazy stuff. One of the other uh, people that they talked to was one of the night desk clerks. I'd hate that job. <laughs> yeah, there's something you don't want to do is you don't want to work night desk at a hotel 
and you don't want to work night shift at a gas station. I just uh-huh. don't see those as being win-win situations. <laughs> but it was it was kind of early in the evening, and she had just gotten there, and the phone started ringing from one of the third floor rooms. So she answered it, and there was nothing there. So she hung up, and it rang back again. Nobody there, and it rang back a third time, and nobody there. And she got to check in her directory, and there's nobody in that specific <gasps> room. So she sent one of the security guards up. Okay? Uh-huh. Well, he got there, and he come back down, and he's like, you're not going to believe this. That's one of the rent- the one of the rooms that was being renovated. Stop. There's no phone. Everything is ripped out. Everything is just wires hanging from, <laughs> from the wall. Stop there's it. There's no phone or nothing. And at that point... She realized that she hadn't even clocked in yet. She would forgot to clock in. Mm-hmm. So she hadn't even turned her phone system on. <gasps> Stop. Yeah. Oh, my God. That'll give you a little bit of chills, won't it? Yeah. <laughs> my whole... I... <laughs> so there's... Oh. What I'm saying is, is the Hotel Galvez is full of paranormal activity. Clearly. Clearly, it's a little spooky there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little spooky. Let me tell you about my visit to yes. Hotel Gavis. And I hope you're not disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I told you about the ferry. Yes. We went to visit my wife's sister, who lived lived down in Beaumont area, which is where Logan is that, you know, yes. is that. Yeah. And we were just, we were happy to be there to visit, but they're like, no, we got to go do something. So we jumped in the car and then Logan's sister jumped in her car because we had a full, you know. Yeah. And she took like Gunner and Montana with her. And we're driving down. We're going to stay at the Hotel Galvez. And we're on the phone with Brittany on the way down. And all I can hear is now at this, I want you to understand at this point, I know nothing about where we're going or this hotel, Mm -hmm. but all I hear is make sure you get the haunted rooms. (gasps) And I'm like, um, what? What does that mean? No, hold on. Hold on. Time out. (laughs) Let's pump the brakes on this little vacation we got going on here. (laughs) I said, you guys can stay in the haunted rooms. Just put me down on the third floor somewhere, you know, out of the way. Yeah, but the third no. floor with the... Yeah, apparently with the phone system. <laughs> apparently, it, obviously, it doesn't matter. We, the hotel, obviously, like I said earlier, you can't get room 501. It's booked out way too far. Yeah. We had 502 and 504. Shut up. Yes. No freaking way. Yeah. Now the disappointing part. <sighs> Nothing. No. Yes. It is a beautiful hotel, and I enjoyed every bit of my visit there, but I had... Zero paranormal activity while I was there. Nobody else did either? No. Well, that's a bummer. But it is a beautiful hotel. It was worth it. But let me tell you a story. Okay. (laughs) The rooms in the hotel are not super big. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously built back in 1911. A million dollars apparently doesn't buy giant rooms. (laughs) People were smaller then, Yeah, right? (laughs) We're splitting a room with, it's me, Bobby, Gunner, and Montana. So we have two queen size beds, not a lot of room. In the middle of the beds, obviously, is a um, like a nightstand. Yeah, a nightstand okay. with a lamp on it. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, "Well, what is this?" And I, I'm by myself, really. I mean, the kids are doing something. I don't know where Bobby was at, but I'm looking at this. There's this little control looking thing sitting on the nightstand. And I'm like, what is this? So I start playing with it. This thing controls lights in the room. Okay. Yeah. Weird, right? Yeah. You know what it controls? The bathroom light. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yes. So, this is me trying not to laugh. <laughs> Later on the first night, because we, we stayed a couple nights there. Later on the first night we're there, my wife goes into the shower. Oh. And I sit on the bed right next to this controller. My kids are oblivious. 
I'm sitting there. Click. The lights go off in the bathroom. You're horrible. I hear, hey, the lights just went on. <laughs> so, I'm the manly man. I get up. I walk in. Why are the lights off? I don't know. They just went off. So, I flip the switch and turn them back on. I said, you good? Yep. <laughs> I go back to the place where I was sitting at, and I wait a few minutes. Click. <laughs> Oh, I did God. that three times. Stop. <laughs> Poor Bobby. <laughs> Until my daughter caught on to what I was doing and totally threw me under the bus. Oh, my gosh. You probably deserve it, though. Go, Montana. <laughs> <laughs> it is an absolutely beautiful hotel. It is gorgeous. It is on the Gulf. It is an amazing place in Galveston. And I would recommend that if anybody wanted to go and do that, that is the place to go. Yeah. I did not run across any paranormal activity that was harming in any way. Yeah. It's just lights flickering or... Attention. Like yeah, pretty much. Just want attention. So, there you go. That is the Hotel Galvez. Wonderful. You did it fantastic. I want to go, though I'd be scared. <laughs> You know, I thought when when I first when they first told me that's what we were doing, I was like, I I was I was completely paranoid. I was like, no, there's no way I'm not doing this. Did you sleep the first night at all? I slept like a baby. Those are the best beds ever. Really? Yes. Well, that's tempting. So, I I'm just saying. In, Is it pricey? Um, I you know what I don't remember. I it's I think it's up there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't quite remember what the price tag. How's the food? Was. <laughs> well, if we're if we're exploring Gal- Galveston a little bit more, uh, they have a lot of breweries down there. So we mm-hmm. actually went to uh, Beerfoot, I think was one of them, and then we went to one on the other side of, of the uh, peninsula, then over by the by the yeah. ports, called the Beers Brother. The yeah, the Beers Brothers. How fun! Yeah, I've never been to Texas. Texas is an amazing state. It's a beautiful I down there. I love the Southwest, so yeah. I'm sure I'd love it. But, yeah. How fun. So exciting. What an interesting place. Yes. And and I wanted to do this, although as I was researching it, you know, the stories weren't, I mean, they're not horrendously terrible. Although, you know, 90 children and <laughs> and sisters passing away in a, in a hurricane is terrible, but. It's not like brutal. Yeah. And. Did, how did um, the Gal- Galvez Bernardo Galvez die? You know what? I know I never said, and uh, I didn't really? really read into him that much. But I don't know that uh, I have anything on him and how he died. Interesting. Yeah, don't have anything. Audra, I I forgot to mention the the lovelorn the, the lovelorn lady's name was Audra. What a pretty name! I'm so sorry, listeners. No, it's your first I'm time, terrible. Jeremy. I will get better, I promise. Yeah, I know you will. You did great. I think you did wonderful. Right on. It's your first little research report. I know. <laughs> I've sat and watched you guys do I it give for you murders. An a. All right, I get an A. <laughs> da, 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 da. I watched you girls do it for the murders so much. I, I want to try to make it a really nice story. Speaking of murders. Speaking of. Murders is a true crime podcast. All stories are from Indiana. Missing, unsolved. And a- and occasionally a survivor story. And occasionally a survival story. But um, we're, we release on Fridays, and you can find us on all your favorite podcast streaming apps and on social media, at Murder Nerds Pod or at Murder Nerds. And you want to drop in a little promo for Golden Image? Golden Image Podcast is a podcast that talks about all the fun things that you can go do in northern Indiana, and sometimes a little bit farther than that. Like, say, Indianapolis. <laughs> we cover restaurants, wineries, bars, casinos. Where else have we, have we been? We've been everywhere. Uh, some annual events like uh, Comic-Con. Oh, yep. Um, what other one did you do? The No, the record is like once a month, the record place. Yeah, once every three months. Uh, the South Bend Record um, show up mm-hmm. in the Ramada up there in Roseland. Yeah. You're going to review festivals in the area? Yes. 
all kinds of stuff. So if you ever need any place to go, you check out Golden Image because you will find a restaurant or something. It's true. To do. And we are a bi-weekly podcast mm -hmm. for the informational, but being the crazy fool that I am, <laughs> I released in the off weeks old sessions, old vintage, we call it vintage Golden Image radio shows with all my old musician buddies. Yeah. I love that. It was it was so great it's to go fun. back and listen to it. So when you don't get the um, informational podcast, you get uh, a bunch of musicians sitting around talking about how big their egos are. Because Jeremy's a musician, and we argued that frontmen have giant egos, and he said, no. No. But he does. It's true, I do. <laughs> and also... The Call Guys. The Call Guys. We love The Call Guys. That is uh, Gunner and Colton on their weekly phone call where they talk about the MCU or Star Wars or whatever is currently coming out. They like to dissect movies and and Disney Plus shows and stuff like that. Yeah. And they're it's doing fun. a great job. They're, they're only a couple in at this point, and they're doing an amazing job. So the call guys. And they're on uh, all the streaming yeah, platforms. Yeah, they made all the streaming. Golden Images on all the streaming platforms. Yep. And the call guys have a uh, YouTube. Yes. The call guys. Because they are video in their calls. So you can see Colton's big fat head. <laughs> 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 yeah, Emperor, that one, big dog. <laughs> And Golden Image has a Facebook. We do. It's Facebook Golden Image Podcast. Yes. Yeah. And the Call Guys is the Call Guys Podcast, right? Yes, I do Call believe. Call Guys Pod. And Murd Nerds is? Murd Nerds Podcast. There you on go. On Facebook. We got them all covered, I think. Yep. We really just- Do you guys have an Instagram? Um, No. No Instagram? No, I just put my Instagram as a, uh, on there, so, <laughs> you know, Golden Mojo Music. <laughs> and do the Call Guys- have an Instagram? Um, I, you'd have to check with, uh, with Gunner. Gunner yeah. yeah, I don't think I found it. But I don't know. I was having trouble with their Facebook, finding their Facebook. He had to link me, but gotcha. I think we got it. Got it all down. Got it covered. We're taking it, we're taking care of it. And as for the United States of Podcasts. That's us. Our paranormal. <laughs> you did it too, I didn't did you? Too. The United States of Paranormal. I did the same thing you did. I, it's terrible. Anyway, for the United States of Paranormal. We are on Facebook, the United States of Paranormal. It's mm -hmm. a mouthful. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mouthful. <laughs> on Twitter, it is T U S O P Pod. I just feel like I show my pom poms for that one. <laughs> T U. Okay. And on Instagram, it's the United States of Paranormal. We're getting them all set up. We're getting them all set up. They're all going to be on there. So Can't this wait. is this is episode two. Hopefully, you enjoyed episode one with uh, T Haas. Is it Tejas? <laughs> Too soft. No, no, Tejas, the Team Tejas down there in Texas. Isn't that what he called himself? Oh, yeah. Team Tejas. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Logan. <laughs> the confusion look on Alicia's yeah. face right now is just priceless. You've done that a lot to beat it. <laughs> I did. I got her. I almost made her cry in my in my thing here. And yeah. It's just been an emotional roller coaster. It's been a, it's been a yeah. So that covers all of our good stuff there? Yeah. All right. We're all good to go. Okay, then. I think we've uh, accomplished our our Aww. first episode. Our first episode Our first together. episode together. It's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank everybody who tuned in and listened to it. Hopefully you enjoyed this. And we will see you on the other side. To support other Golden Mojo Entertainment Productions, check out Golden Image Podcast, The Call Guys, and Murd Nerds wherever you enjoy listening to podcasts. To see photos and find new episodes of the United States of Paranormal, follow us on our social media, Twitter at T-U-S-O-P-P-O-D, or Instagram at the United States of Paranormal, and Facebook the United States of Paranormal. If you have a place that you'd like us to look into or would like to share your spooky story that we can read on the air, please email us at the United States of Paranormal at gmail.com. <laughs>